We're going for level three here, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to feature the new truck, the last new truck, and, uh, well, you can't see it. It's I called that truck the new truck for a while, too, but my 08 5500. But we're going to go through, and I'm going to discuss the process of, for one, buying a truck out of state. I saved a whole bunch of money. Secondly, is it a difficult process to bring a truck from out of state into California? Well, for one, no, it's not. It's pretty easy, but everybody thinks they're difficult regulations to bring a truck into this state well let me just educate you on one thing every new vehicle out there conforms to the same regulations safety standards and california emission standard every vehicle does out there i mean it's good and bad in a sense but they're really hitting on the diesel community it's something ridiculous they're putting enough stuff on there to really put frown on your face so you don't want to take it all back off because it's such a pain to do all that plus it's apparently Illegal? Is that how I pronounce that right? Instagram and the V Belt and Sun saying, take a guess on how much the truck weighs. Start off with this truck so you guys got an idea of how much these vehicles All weigh. Alright, so I bought this truck used from a dealer out of Texas. Now, buying from a dealer is a lot easier to transfer paperwork and stuff like that because everything's straight up legit. But at the end of the day, if you buy something used um, from Craigslist or whatever, you simply got a title and all that stuff. But these guys were good, easy to work with. I bought this truck, one owner, 48,000 original miles. And there's a couple things you got to do with your standard vehicle to bring it into California, which is uh, a smog emissions check. This truck is too large for that check because it falls under like a straight up commercial vehicle being that it's a 5500 and thus the emission stuff can fall off not legal extracted and say the fourth gens or the fifth gens are my favorite trucks but these things are just the kind of do all just killers you know i love these things great exhaust brake great towing power and the high output trucks actually get off the line and accelerate pretty good even considering that this truck you know fiat built being my favorite ish this thing weighs right at 8500 pounds and when they came out with four and a half or fifth gen they did some engine revisions to try to make a lighter block and save weight there but they also reinforced the frame so i think it's kind of a draw because first-hand experience i know i got a buddy he had to weigh his truck again brought it in from nevada and come to find out that they both weigh 8500 pounds so it's going to be pretty interesting to see how much the new 22 5500 weighs and it's just going to have cab plus the bed nothing else it's gonna be half tank somewhere in that nature and you know one might say well it's going to be lighter than the older truck because they're trying to reduce the weight or they realistically just tried to make them stronger and beefed it up and it's going to weigh more so we'll find out tomorrow we'll go get this thing weighed i'm headed to the local gravel See yard then. right now to get the truck weighed and i'm going to have two bits of information that's going to come out of this if you guys are paying attention early on in this video but let's get on over there all right this is by far the simplest way to do this swing into the old gravel yard and get weighed in first one a little tricky because you got to hop out so you get the unladen weight with nothing in it just truck bed not you in it so we'll knock that out real quick oh they got new rails that's nice Get out, get the unladen wood. Okay, now you go back down to the office, get the scale tickets, and we are on our way. These things. Now that we got the truck weighed, that should be one of the steps and hoops we gotta jump through going to DMV. Next and final thing, since we don't have to go get a small inspection check on this, they'll just look at the uh, engine sticker anyway to see that it meets California requirements is we got to go get the completed upfitter sticker since I am the upfitter we are going to go get the sticker 
right now and uh, I'll show you guys simply what we do. Keep in mind, you can buy these stickers on eBay, you can source them from anywhere, and they just simply print them out with your information on it, and it is your name saying that they, or the upfitter's name saying yes, the thing is completed and meets regulations, as in having your lights and all that stuff where they should be and all working. So let's go get this sticker. I know a guy. The sticker for the completed vehicle, but the build date for the engine in my truck is my birthday, which is cool as hell. I thought I would check my dad's, and his was built two days before. Both these trucks were built in February 22. The engine was built January 27th, 22. I, I think that's cool. So, if you guys don't know how this works, the truck comes as a cabin chassis. And, where does it say? Incomplete vehicle right here. DMV throws a fit because they're stupid about it. And you actually got to go get it verified and stuff like that. Unless... You have the completed vehicle sticker and that is up for the upfitter to place on the truck and so i am the upfitter so i just i got my own sticker i'll show you i've seen outfits sell these things on ebay you just text them and tell them what your info and all that stuff is i've seen them on the log trucks 18 wheelers and stuff because they all come essentially cabin chassis when you outfit it with you know fenders flatbed it all comes down to in the bottom here what the vehicle type is and all that stuff so she is done deal all right we meet again trip two with the truck fully outfitted i don't have a full tank of fuel only quarter tank and then quarter tank of def and then transfer tank low too but on the road now we know what it weighs without any toolboxes and now we know what it weighed with all the toolboxes so i'm gonna go get fuel right now and we're gonna find out if the fill neck actually allows full use of the uh, big rig pump which is a high volume high flow fill the tank up quick and if you know these cab chassis they come with a 55 gallon tank versus uh, your standard 32 on your regular pickup so that's kind of nice for you know longer trips and stuff like that or i'll be actually very excited if this big rig pump works oh man there's a there's a guy blocking it there son of a gun son of a gun oh well we'll just top off the truck and then maybe check see how much off-road we got and i'll just top it off with some on road if this guy's not done this will be a real big moment if this son of a gun just accepts it because my other cab chassis flatbed truck nope you gotta flip it upside down only level one we're going for level three here folks and it did that with the short fill neck let's see if it does it on level two it will go to level three but i'm a little scared it's just gonna shoot junk everywhere hey i do dad fell down son of a gun let's go to level three hell yeah we we'll don't know if it'll shoot stuff out unless we try it man that is so much nicer you don't know when you have to deal with the slow pump and you're in a hurry you're trying to pump 50 gallons or the off-road pump you're trying to pump 100 plus gallons it's nice to have this high volume thing so thanks to my channel anti-sponsors idiot politicians that just costs i don't know about five times more than it should have it's like you think an adult is smart no they just they're screwing everybody everybody they're screwing them over but anyway top lock ready to rock Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it's a little above and beyond for you guys. I weighed the truck before I finished out the skirts, before I put the toolboxes on it, before I put the fuel tank in the back, but I also went through and weighed it when it was just bare bones truck with nothing in it, not even me, like you saw, and no toolboxes on it. That is something I wanted for DMV because they want to know how much the truck weighs and that will reflect on your registration. And I'll tell you a story on that here in a second. 
But when it came to casting your votes on the truck, I wanted you not to guess with the toolboxes because I hadn't even showed you guys yet. Just posted on my story that the voting is closed on that. And boy, I'll tell you, we had some really, really close guesses. So keep in mind, a regular Ram 3500 is right at 8,500 pounds, just bare bone truck. And when I tell you the weight of this thing, I want you to remember that when it comes down to the 5500 versus the 3500 high output in the next week or so. A lot of this footage is kind of old because I just, I have so much going on, so many moving parts in life right now. And building the toolboxes, everything, just finding time for all this. But keep in mind the weight differences. So I'm going to list off a couple people that were, uh, I highlighted last night. I just went through and rechecked everything make sure nobody came in with another guess right off the bat there was guesses 9,000 10,000 and there was 10,250 10,250 again and I was like man there might be several winners and I was like man they're getting close and list off one of them right off the bat that was real close early on a rent bisky 10,280 he was really close Talked to Bob Barker, he went over the top, didn't count. And then we had a 10,256, and I'm like, man, if somebody gets the exact one, they're going to get a bonus. I was like, holy jeez, they're getting really close. And then we had, uh, that guy was Mullet Gang with three. And then the, the guy that actually won and got it the closest out of everybody, his name is 19Mikey76. And he guessed 10,258 pounds. The actual weight on this truck was 10,260 pounds. Again, that was just what I asked for. That is bare bones truck and the flatbed. Now that I want and reweight it all again, I know how much these toolboxes weighed because I individually weighed them before I put them on the truck. The front two, the bigger ones, are 50 pounds. The back two are 40 pounds give or take a little bit on there with handles and cutting welding slag off and stuff like that but I did weigh them and the paint might add it just a touch but so we got about 200 pounds there and the 200 pounds miscellaneous and the extra fuel tank so all said and done the truck weighs about 10 6 10 7 which coincidentally weighs a thousand pounds more than my old 5500 and that is just it's heartbreaking <laughs> realistically you know they they make leaps and bounds thinking they're gonna improve these trucks and you know make them lighter kind of like diamond c does they make a bigger better stronger trailer that actually is lighter but i don't know what it came to with the ram and i'm not really disappointed in it let's just say it's got more meat on its bones so it's stronger which will be fine and it hold up but one cool thing about this the best mileage i ever saw out of my old 5500 with its gearing and the stick shift was 14 and that is with stuff not on it and uh oddly enough it did better towing a trailer on one trip than it did empty figure that one out but this truck was getting 15 on its own which is better and it weighs a thousand pounds more and on average the fuel mileage seems to be doing just as good as the old truck with fully attacked everything on it which is amazing truck is all completed and everything I went ahead and waited until this thing is completely confirmed and I have my license plates. This simple sticker that is required to complete the truck, it's no questions asked kind of a thing. The first time I had run into that issue with my old truck, I had to go to the CHB office, which is a DOT, and get it VIN verified. And I showed up with that sticker on it and I told him about it. And the way I got the idea for this sticker is because that's what a logging truck has. It is not a completed vehicle. From factory it's a cab chassis just on a really large scale saw that sticker on there started doing the research and found out that's a sticker you need you don't get that from your dealer you get that from an upfitter and if you are an upfitter like that well bada bing so it was no questions asked when i went to dmv and i said there's the epa sticker there's the vin sticker itself obviously the one in the windshield to double vin verify and the completed vehicle sticker from the upfitter is right there and it was 30 seconds compared to a several week process with my first truck because I did not know what that sticker was and I did not know how to get one of those. So I'm not going to try and sell those things. But I mean, if somebody did get a cab chassis truck and was in California or whatever and needed to upfit one of those, I'm not sure if other states care. 
let me know we can make something happen but it was so nice it was just a clean slate and the one funny thing about this i was really worried about the last story before in this video funny story because i was all worried that being over 10,000 pounds unladen weight was going to spike my registration even more than it already was so i was scheming up ideas i was like i can take the inner dual off take the spare off which weigh 120 pounds a piece and go get this thing reweighed but i thought you know what i'm gonna go over to dmv see what they got to offer see what they say if it's gonna do anything and ultimately no it does not bump up my registration which is already expensive enough on its own and that was a really big concern being over 10,000 pounds like i almost kind of lost sleep about it and funnier enough even yet the full amount of paperwork hadn't showed up at that point in time for this truck but it had for my dad's and when you buy a brand new vehicle i've had the experience with the trailers i've had the experience with the trucks you don't actually have to bring the truck and get it weighed because it's already on the manufacturer's title they already say how much it weighs so she said well you got the same truck as your dad typed it in and i was like what you say she already got it done but my dad's truck is a 4500 regular cab which weighs a little bit less so this thing filed under the category of unladen weight of 6600 pounds didn't matter it wasn't going to mess with my uh, registration anyway but just kind of funny only thing i really is really need to do to this thing is i need to put some rated over 10k red and white stickers on the side if you don't believe that's what that means look it up don't argue with me i'm just following the rules end of the day i'd rather pay for my high registration and all that stuff get my insurance all the ducks in a row because i've ran moonlight several times and back in the day before i got goosenecks and stuff like that um i did tow some stuff that it's non there was cdl stuff that I, you know, just kind of sent it, and it's just not worth it looking over my shoulder. And that's gonna be nice having this truck, having all the missions and stuff on it. And I have to look over my shoulder. If they pull me over for whatever reason, I got everything, all my ducks in a row, and fit four sticker on it. If you have the tires for it, factory ratings, and you pay for that door sticker, you gotta have, you know, bigger trailer to meet that. I currently won't quite do that. Highest I can go is only to 50. But hopefully the new trailer shows up and that will make sense. It's the same price for a 50 versus a 54 on that sticker anyway. Anyway, we're talking too much. Thanks for watching. I'm going to hit up Mikey. You won a prize. V-Bone Sun merchandise. He was the closest to the unladen weight. This bed and cab of his guess was 250 or 10,258 and the weight was 10,260. So damn close. Also, my email's in the description. You have to prove that it's you, but we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.